Ah, we're in the Kimberley at present. Yeah, in the Savannah Woodlands. Yeah, they're stuffed. Stuffed by too many cattle. Stuffed by uh, too much burning to get the pasture grasses to keep proliferating each year. Yeah, not a lot of reptiles up here. I know uh, the northern quoll's done a runner and I don't blame it. Ha! <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's pretty difficult for it to exist up here too. It's been vanishing for the last hundred years from this country. Yeah, I don't think it'll be a problem when the cane toad gets here. There'll be nothing for the cane toad to exclude. Yeah, in fact, the poor old cane toad's going to have difficulty getting established in this country. It's got to compete with the hooves of all the cattle. Ah, yeah, anyone from the Kimberley that describes it as pristine has never been off the coast. Yeah, that's what I reckon. You take the Pilbara. The Pilbara has been undergoing, well, exploitation for the resource industry for a lot of years. I tell you what, it's been managed pretty good. The Pilbara is pristine by comparison to the Kimberley, where they've tried to exclude industry. Yeah, maybe other industries, resource industries, will make a better go of it than the cattle have done. That's what I reckon. Ha <laughs> ha. Ha, can you see me? Yeah, I'm amongst the cane grass. Here we are in the extreme western parts of the Kimberley. And the news is not all bad for the Kimberley, it's mainly the savannah woodlands that are taking a flogging from overgrazing. Here, the country could be described as great. Yeah, great, because it's a shrubland dominated by acacia and a dense well, grassland understory. And because of that density of vegetation, it does provide a greater opportunity for a vaster density of reptiles. So the news is not all bad. The acacia here in Dampier land is generally referred to as Pindan, red soil and Pindan. The other thing you notice here is that the substrate changes, a nice sandy red soil. As we go further east, it turns into a heavy white loamy soil fair bit of clay component, but uh, this is great for the fossorial reptiles, they can move through this, so density of fossorial reptiles is far greater in this extreme western parts of the Kimberley than it is in the eastern parts. Yeah, you might be wondering why I haven't visited those more iconic areas of the Kimberley, well, those areas are quite pristine because they're set aside in national parks, places like the Bungle Bungles and that. But uh, most of the Kimberley is not like that. Most of it is just vast uh, pasture these days, woodlands, shrublands, and occasionally an iconic area amongst the vastness. Here we are on the Roebuck Plains. Yeah, this vast grassland, vegetated with both endemic and exotic grasses. The great thing here is the road verges are up to five chain wide. And when you look at the density of the grasses, you can appreciate that larger lapids and pythons, like black-headed pythons, and um, the lapids like mulga snakes, and western brown snakes can actually exist here, plus a whole range of the smaller species because even though there's a lot of cattle out there on the flat, the road verges actually provide corridors for the native um, reptiles and other organisms. Anyone driving north of Sandfire heading for the Kimberley will be familiar with this patch of habitat. Yeah, it's a Malaluka woodland out here in the middle of nowhere in that transitional country between the Pilbara proper and the Kimberley. It's a salt lake, but the dominant vegetation here is Malaluka, paper bark, and the understory is made up by succulents, salt resistant succulents, and including a salt resistant spinifex. Being a southerner, every time I see this bit of habitat, I keep thinking of tiger snakes, and I always have a bit of a poke around, just in case there's a relative population of Northern tiger snakes in WA. No doubt, a bit more work, we might even turn up a 
Salt Lake specific agamut in this country, but because there's no gene flow with the other salt lakes, it might be new. You beauty! <laughs> I just pulled up to get a bit of footage of this Aussie flag flying on a hill in the Pilbara. The Pilbara, a hard country for hard men and hard women. I tell you, it's amazing, isn't it, eh? Yeah, someone's climbed a hill in the middle of nowhere to fly the Aussie flag. You beauty! That's what I say. Come on, Aussie, come on. Terrific. Ah, the pristine Pilbara. You beauty. Yeah, there's people up there in the Kimberley, they reckon they don't want their country over-exploited like the Pilbara, they must never have been here. We are utilising the resources here, but it's a much more pristine environment, and a very vast pristine environment. Just for the record, the word's not real bad for Kimberley. Um, at the moment, stock numbers are probably higher than would normally be the case, because of the government's prohibition on the export to Indonesia increased numbers on the land. So the news is not all bad, but uh, you cannot call the Kimberley as pristine as the Pilbara. You beauty. The sun's setting in the west. Yeah, it's time to do a revision of what we've seen between the Kimberley and the Pilbara. Pilbara is quite pristine by comparison to the Kimberley. Livestock hasn't had as negative an impact here in the Pilbara, but places that have been negatively impacted are the Fortescue marshes and the extreme southwestern parts of the Pilbara. Places like Onslow across to Paradou. Again, for the same reason that the savannah is stuffed in the Kimberley, livestock have had a negative impact. Yeah, if you go to places like Onslow or Paradou, you're lucky to see too much endemic spinifex as native grasses. You're more likely to see extensive areas of buffalo grass, pasture. The Fortescue marshes have been degraded and all the water holes um, are generally fouled by overstock uh, with cattle. And um, some of the riverine habitats are pretty degraded as well. But if we go up to the Kimberley, the savannah is such a large area of the Kimberley, the savannah is totally degraded. I'm here at the Hammersley Ranges at the moment, and the Hammersley Ranges are like a vast bungle bungle through the Pilbara. The Pilbara is definitely a more attractive place, a more less disturbed place, a more less exploited place than the Kimberley. Sounds like I'm uh, being a little bit negative towards the livestock industry. I love me meat. In fact, feed the man meat, I say. You can keep that vegetable matter, it's not very satisfying. So I like me meat, but I think we've got to reduce stock numbers in a lot of the country just to reduce the negative impact on the habitat, the natural environments. Yeah, so that's pretty much a summary. All we really require really is the removal of some of the livestock, reduce the numbers per uh, square mile of pasture, Hopefully, uh, a reduction in the exotic pasture grasses. And I know that's going to be damn difficult to um, achieve because uh, they've got a foothold now and they are having a negative impact on the native grasses because um, the fire and the fire is supported by the exotic pasture grasses. Well, let's all enjoy a beer and let, get on with the business of getting on and don't let it worry us too much. Catch you later, okay? Ah, that's bloody great. The sun's just about gone.